All right, everyone, welcome to this episode of Above the Hook. Today, we're going to be going over step by step and in detail on how to tie a dropper loop. Okay, so what I'm going to start out with first is just kind of go over what I primarily use a dropper loop for. Primarily use a dropper loop for a teaser hook whenever I'm out saltwater fishing for rock cod. But it's an extremely good knot to know for multiple different types of fishing. A lot of people use it for carp fishing, uh, when they're fishing for panfish, uh, fishing deep water. There are two primary reasons why I like using a dropper loop setup on my rock cod rig. The first reason is that I can interchange these baits extremely fast just by slipping the line off and on. And I'll show you that later after I tie the knot, how that actually works. The second reason why is with the dropper loop, it gives you an extremely large tag, which ends up making it to where the, the bait is a little further off your, your line. The further off it is on the line, it tends to have a lot better movement. The more you can make your bait lifelike with better movement, the better strikes that you're gonna be able to get. These are the two main reasons why I like using a teaser bait, using the dropper loop on my rock cod rig. What I'd like to do next is show you an example of a bait that's tied to a main line on a dropper loop versus a hook tied onto that main line. As you can see in this example, the dropper loop tends to have a lot better movement than a hook that's tied directly to the main line. And the reason being is that it just has more room for play. Okay, so what we're gonna do next is I'm gonna go ahead and go over step by step on how to actually tie this dropper loop. For the example, I'm gonna be using a thicker cord uh, so it's not going to be as easy to tie as if you're using monofilament or fluorocarbon, but I want to be able to actually show you how it's done. So I'm going to show you with this cord first, and then I'm actually going to go ahead and do it with a monofilament and fluorocarbon. So before you tie the dropper loop, you want to determine how much length you want from your main hook to your teaser hook. Keep in mind that you do still have to tie on the main hook, so you want to keep a little bit of extra down at the bottom so you're not taking away from that distance between the two. So once you've determined that, and I usually keep mine about a foot to two feet, no more than two feet off of my main hook. Uh, once you determine that, the first step that you're going to do is you're going to take that line and you're going to go ahead and make a loop. Depending on how big that loop is, is going to depend on how big that tag is going to be. Um, I typically like to run my tag uh, probably about no more than three inches, but usually like around two inches to about one and a half inches. So after you make the loop, you're going to find that you have two lines on the top and one line on the bottom. What you're going to do next is you're going to take these two lines and you're just going to wrap them over each other four times. Once you wrap it over four times, you're going to end up having this opening area right here. From there, you're going to stick your fingers through. You're going to grab that single line that's beneath it, grab it with your teeth, and then you're going to basically pull them together. And that's how you get that drop. Okay, like I mentioned earlier, one of the perks about having a dropper loop is you can change up to different baits fairly easy without having to retie. And how you're going to do that is you take the loop, you pinch it off at the end, you're going to slip it through the eye of the hook all the way through. And as long as that loop is big enough, all you got to do is just slip that bait through and then it slips knots on to the dropper loop. To take off this hook now, all I need to do is just basically do everything I just said in reverse. So you're going to slip the line, push it back through towards the knot, and then slip that through just like so. We'd like to thank you for taking the time to watch this video. And if you got any information out of it, be sure to hit that like button and subscribe. And stay tuned for our next episode where we go out on the hunt for Cabazon rockfish.